Hi guys, my name is Maya Steele and I'm doing my project on the Coca-Cola Company. Coca-Cola was created in 1886 by an Atlanta pharmacist, Dr. John S. Pemberton. The name Coca-Cola was derived from two primary ingredients, the coca leaf and the cola nut. Extracted the coca leaf was essentially cocaine and the cola nut provided caffeine. The drink was originally advertised as patient medicine. Pemberton claimed that it cured headaches, upset stomach, and fatigue. In 1929, the company was forced to remove all traces of cocaine soon becoming a popular soft drink which was viewed as an alternative to alcohol for adults. However, over the years, Coca-Cola has partnered with many fast food restaurants like McDonald's in order to expand its target market to children as well. When Coca-Cola was originally created, the first year sales were averaged at 9 servings a day. Now, daily servings of Coca-Cola beverages are estimated at 1.9 billion globally. While the product was originally created and sold in Atlanta, Georgia, it is now sold globally in over 200 countries. The Coca-Cola logo is recognized by 94% of the world's population. The Coca-Cola website has an entire page dedicated to their code of conduct. However, when it comes to interacting and communicating with the country outside of the United States, Coca-Cola hires representatives around the world. These representatives build relationships with the customers and promote the product to different customers within the regions that they work. Coca-Cola has also been known to adapt their product differently to each country. Below I have given an example of how Coca-Cola introduced itself to China. Since it was not possible to translate Coca-Cola to ma Mandarin, the vendors used Mandarin characters to spell out Coca-Cola. Below is an example of that. Leadership and Management Built on group membership, the leaders at Coca-Cola are built on democratic and laissez-faire leadership. The managerial styles of these managers also follow the incentive-based system for actualizing peak performance from the salesperson. Some examples of these incentives may be pay raises, new benefits, and adding holidays. The employees are also evaluated according to their contribution to the actualization of overall goals of the organization, as well as their soft skills including communication, people management, coordination, and service quality. Coca-Cola is classified as faith-friendly. They do not align with one religion, but instead invite workers to bring all manners of religious and ex spiritual expression to the workplace. Decision making. The first step in Coca-Cola's decision making is data driven. One of Coca-Cola's strategies when it comes to aligning the material issues is being able to ensure inclusive, participatory, and representative decision making. According to a UK journal, Coca-Cola has a six step decision process whenever it comes to making new decisions. The Coca-Cola company decision which always takes by the top manager, can be related to the packaging, positioning, trade discounts, advertisement, price reductions, and distribution. Conflict management. The Coca-Cola company has a couple of methods when it comes to conflict management. One is being in 2000, Coca-Cola approved a plan to launch a comprehensive ADR program designed to assist every Coca-Cola employee to resolve disputes early and often. Another method they have for external conflicts is hiring Melanie Lewis, who is Corporate Manager of Conflict Management. Melanie has created a system for internal conflicts, developed conflict skills training courses for employees, and developed internal and external mediation and arbitration programs. Negotiations Coca-Cola seems to have an individualistic negotiation style, making different deals with each individual company and at times subsequent short-term contracts that might set prices and promotional allowances for specific products. However, I believe Coca-Cola is more long-term focused. They partner with conservations in nationwide events. This not only benefits sales, but allows consumers to look at the company in a positive light. Coca-Cola has been partnered with the World Wildlife Fund for over a decade and the Special Olympics since 1968. In my opinion, Coca-Cola is a well-rounded company. For years, they have displayed good ethics and made sure their company was projected in a positive light. They have embraced intercultural communication caveats by acknowledging individual uniqueness around the globe and compromise. I believe Coca-Cola values future and doing orientations. The company is always shifting their marketing strategies and ads to reflect what is going on in the world. On the company website, they claim to be using a prudent approach when agreeing to major projects and investments. By using ads like Make It Real and Life Tastes Good, they are embracing the proactive attitude that doing orientation displays. If I could suggest one thing, it would be making a change in their decision-making strategies. While the company listens to its customers, they do not seem to have a chain of command when making large decisions. When reading their webpage, I feel that most decisions are solely made by the president of the company. Overall, I do feel that the Coca-Cola company holds many forms of value orientation when marketing their brand. 
They embrace other countries and do work with them in order to maintain a largely successful company. Thank you.